response I get very often when I tell people, you know, being with yourself as you are, no judgment, with kindness, with curiosity. Um, for many people, accepting and loving the body as it is, um, they find that they have a fear around, you know, then they won't be able to get where they want to be. So they'll be stuck, they'll settle forever where they are right now. Um, and you explain in your book that this is not necessarily the case. So maybe you can tell us more about that. Yeah, so loving yourself means, so when you love somebody, how do you treat them? Right. Wow. <laughs> you treat them well, right? You, 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 you do nice things for them. Uh, you say nice things for them. When you don't love somebody, how do you treat them? Terrible. <laughs> yeah. When you, when you criticize yourself, how do you feel? Oh. Yeah, terrible. Once again, yeah. Depleted, right? When you criticize yourself, if you're constantly like, I can't believe you don't look any better than you do. And I can't believe you did that. And, you know, you're such a dummy. Why did you do, you know, blah, blah, blah. I mean, that just, criticism makes you feel bad. Mm -hmm. And when you feel bad, how do you behave? Yeah, destructive, probably. Destructive. I've had plenty of experience with that. <laughs> so I can tell you from experience that, you know, I was very destructive in my life, you know, when I was younger, because I didn't feel good about myself. I didn't have a sense of self. And I mean, I almost killed myself because of it, you know, in a variety of ways. Um, and then I had, you know, kind of a spiritual awakening of sorts. And I began to learn what it meant to bring kindness to myself, to stop judging myself so much. And as I did that, I began to treat myself better, right? And so I stopped doing the things that were destructing me. And I started building on things that helped me feel better and, um, <clears throat> you know, have more joy in my life and have more of what I wanted. And the body begins to come into balance, right? <clears throat> There's not one weight that everybody should be. And by the way, all of these you know, classifications of overweight and obese and all of these, these are just constructs built by the medical establishment that are useless <laughs> and they don't define you, right? So we've been defined by the medical institutions in a very destructive way. They put you in a category and then they've made judgments about you based on that and weight stigma is more destructive than weight. Weight does not necessarily correspond to even health, right? Thin people can be unhealthy and they get ignored because a doctor thinks, oh, well, you're thin, you're healthy. And this just isn't true. You, and a lot of people that I know that are in the overweight category or obese category that are perfectly healthy, right? So health and weight don't necessarily correspond to one another. And yet, we have so much, uh, so many, you know, establishments that try to tell us that. The diet industry wants you to think that because it's selling you products. The medical industry should know better, but apparently they don't. Uh, a lot of them don't. And we're trying to do some education with doctors and with the, those, that group of people that are healthcare providers to stop doing the things that they're doing, which is if they see you in a certain category, they say, go on a diet. Like, what does that mean? You know, and then people are all confused. And then it's weight stigma. Weight stigma creates the majority of health issues that we face. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's just really, you know, weight discrimination, weight stigma, you know, this going on a diet, going off a diet, that causes you more problems than anything that you've, you'll ever do, you know. Mm -hmm. So look at what you've been doing and ask yourself, how's that working for you? And while it may be, it's always scary to do something new. It's always scary to do something different. And loving yourself may seem scary. And like accepting yourself just as you are may seem like, oh my gosh, then I'm just going to eat everything I want to. And you know what? You might at first. And that's okay. 
when the pendulum swings back this way, I don't like myself. I'm going to love myself. I restricted forever. Now I'm allowing myself, but it can maybe go over to a little, you know, overeating, right? Because anytime you've restricted, you're going to overeat. Anytime you've restricted yourself from anything, you're going to overdo it when it's allowed. So you can expect that as part of the process, right? And I, I, I try to address that in my classes with my three food wisdoms, um, which gives you some structure around this allowing of food, you know, maybe for the first time in your life. Um, because anytime you restrict, you're going to binge. Anytime you restrict, you're going to binge. That's how it, that works. Binge, restrict cycle. It's very well documented in the literature. So when you stop restricting, mindfulness gives you the skill to lessen the reaction to the permission that you're going to give yourself, right? But because you have to start giving yourself permission to have whatever you want. You, you have to do that in order to give up the diet mentality. And so there can be a little overdoing before you come back to balance, right? It's just how things work. Restrict, and then come back to balance, right? And so don't, I know it's hard to say don't, it's like, I'm, don't worry about it. And I know that you will, but <clears throat> you, if you're practicing mindfulness, mindfulness is the key. I almost think you have to have a mindfulness practice in order to successfully navigate that pendulum. And, and, you know, and so they talk about this in intuitive eating as well, is that there's no forbidden food. And so when I taught the principles from the intuitive eating book, I noticed there was a huge problem with this particular area. And so that's why I developed the three food wisdoms, which is give yourself permission to eat anything that you want, but then use mindfulness, second wisdom, use mindfulness to determine what's the amount of that food that I should eat. Because when people say I have permission to eat anything I want, what they hear is I can eat anything I want as much as I want, whenever I want. And that's not what this is saying, mm -hmm. right? You don't throw your brain out. You don't throw your belly out when you do this. <clears throat> how much, of, I always like to say, how much of a pan of brownies is the right amount of brownie to eat for your body in this moment? Is it the whole pan? You know, and maybe at first you need to eat the whole pan, but, but gradually you're going to see, you know, I ate the whole pan and I think I was listening to my head who's been restricting for a long time and my body is saying, wow, you really overdid it. <clears throat> so gradually you begin to listen to your belly and your body, which is, you know, a little more conservative about how much it really wants, you know, and it says, you know, a brownie, you know, or even a half a brownie, maybe even a bite of brownie is enough. And you've had your brownie, you allow the brownie, and then, you know, you don't have to overdo it. And then the third wisdom, as you're learning this process of giving yourself permission with food, is really to know and respect your patterns and triggers. I, I just think that there has to be some structure, and not everybody would agree with me, and I'm just going to go ahead and say that. Some people say, bring in all of your forbidden food into your house and have it lying around everywhere in front of you, and good luck. <laughs> you, know, or that, you, know, you have to have that in order to feel like you have full permission. Personally, for me, that's not what I did. It's not what I often encourage other people to do. You can do that if you want to, by all means. I think a kinder, gentler way for at least me was <clears throat> I would bring it in and I would notice, okay, that's not working. I, having it at the house and knowing that I'm not completely mindful all the time, that I would unconsciously eat a gallon of ice cream. Okay. Okay. I felt like crap, didn't like that. So I'm like, I want my ice cream, but I really don't want to eat that much. But I'm not always mindful. What's a better way I could do this? So I would not bring it home, but I would go, if I wanted ice cream, I'd go down to the ice cream parlor. There's a little great place called Sparky's downtown Columbia. And I'd have a cup of ice cream. And I would stop because I made it an event. I made it, you know, uh, a time set aside to really stop and really enjoy and really savor the food that I hadn't allowed myself or that I had overeaten in the past. So in this way, I'm really training myself 
to be fully present for the eating experience because these forbidden foods, we tend to not eat them consciously. We eat them unconsciously. We eat them fast. We don't stop and really savor. We're like, you know, because I shouldn't be eating it and I'm eating it anyway. And, you know, I don't want anybody, I don't want to have anybody see me eat it. And, you know, there's all this stuff that we do. So we want to get out of that. So for me, it was like going, I can sit in front of Sparky's, I can have my ice cream, and then I can slowly savor it. And it becomes this whole experience that I have shown myself that I can do effectively without sabotaging myself. So give yourself complete permission to eat whatever it is you want. Ask yourself, you know, through mindfulness practice, what is the right amount of this food for my body right now? And that can change every time you sit down and eat. And then what are your patterns and triggers? What are the foods that, you know, when do you go, when do you get distracted and become mindless uh, around food? When do you, which, which foods are more difficult for you to eat than others in a mindful way? And work with that, you know, be kind to yourself, you know, find ways of having it without making it a, an experience that then you feel like, oh, I can't have to do that again. Mm-hmm. For me, that doesn't seem helpful, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So I want to build a little bit of structure for people. Mm-hmm.